The summer 2022 anime season is by far one of my favorite anime seasons of all time. Just so many fantastic titles from sports to characters to drama to mystery to supernatural. It's all here and there's so many amazing titles. So much so that when I went to go do my usual top five list, I struggled. <laughs> I really did. I, I got to a point where I was going to go top 10, which I don't normally do. And after some soul searching, after a lot of debating with myself, I finally come down to deciding I'm going to do my top five plus one. <laughs> so here is my top five anime of summer 2022 anime season plus one. Starting things off with number six, I have Made in Abyss, The Golden City of the Scorching Sun or Made in Abyss second season. This series is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> it's always been. From the first season, I was captivated by the sheer creativity of the abyss itself. For those who don't know, it's essentially about this town that's around this big abyss. And it's this huge hole that nobody knows why it's there, but everybody likes to adventure down to it and get the artifacts from, from beneath it. And we follow a girl named Rico, who is her mother went down to this abyss at some point. And she received some letter that kind of indicated that she was down there. So Rico decides that she's going to go down there and find all these wonders that her mother sent this letter from. And this is where things get a little dark because the abyss itself has a curse. The further you go down, if you try to come back out of the abyss itself, it affects you. It actually mutates your body if you go too far down. As we get into the second season, we are beyond the point of return. <laughs> And we're getting into the story of this other group that actually went down there. And it's all been super fascinating. Essentially a village full of hollows that have all given up their humanity and are living by value alone. And again, it hits on the creativity of the writer themselves. Every single layer that we have gone through in this journey down to this abyss has all been a fascinating artistry, a canvas of just interesting and just out of this world type of stuff. It's so alien, yet so grounded in reality. And yes, this writer does not hold anything back. This world sucks and it gets super dark. And yes, even in the second season, it just keeps getting darker and darker. And I, yet I keep eating it up because I'm so intrigued by this world. And I love the characters and the experiences they go through and the difficulties they face. Again, it's all grounded and it feels real and it feels visceral. I just can't get enough of it. And Kinema Citrus has just, they keep one-upping themselves. It just seems like the series gets better and better visually and through the acting. The seiyus in this season did such a phenomenal job of portraying the emotion and the frustration and the pain that these characters are going through. I just, it's so fascinating. It's so creative and I just cannot get enough of Made in Abyss. And sadly, it's pretty much caught up with the manga at this point, so it's gonna be a while before we see anything additional, but I highly recommend Made in Abyss. Moving on to my number five is Call the Night. This series is so good. <laughs> I'm gonna say that with every series, obviously, but this one, I think the reason why I was so gravitated to it early on was obviously the character designs. Nazana, this vampire, just, she's Toga, but a vampire. She looks great. But additionally, what I kind of was grabbed by was the the feel of the show itself. The visual style that Leiden Films did for this series was absolutely phenomenal. The backdrops, the night lights, the, the empty streets, the feeling of the atmosphere of the freedom of night was definitely there, and they pulled it off so well. But additionally, the music was so phenomenal. I cannot believe how well they did with the music. It so fits the style and the feel of this environment. But additionally, what kind of grabbed me and kept me going was just how human the storytelling was, despite the fact that you have a bunch of vampires around. Ko and what he's going through and escaping the daytime and escaping the responsibilities and the dramas of his life and enjoying the freedoms that the night gives him. And yes, add on to that, just the goofy silliness that comes of Nazana, this vampire that has a very weird way of seeing how vampires work. Yes, the oddity here is that a vampire, in order to create an offspring or another vampire, the person that's bit has to love the vampire. And so you have this aspect of Ko not understanding love, having to figure it out because he wants to become a vampire. But additionally, the goofiness that Nazana believes that <laughs> that's basically like, um, yeah, making a baby, so. <laughs> Her biting him is basically the same act. And so it just, it creates a bunch of goofiness. Nazana is a total dork and just all the characters they experience through the night is just, they were so fantastic. I cannot express enough visually, music, everything was fantastic with the series. And I just, I related to so much of what it was going through. But yeah, call the night. Highly suggest it. Moving on to my number four, Shadow House second season. I cannot get enough of this building. <laughs> I was gonna say world, but it technically world, but this Shadow House mansion is just a onion. I want to see more of the 
the layers peeled off. It's so interesting. The amount of effort that this creator put into the series, it's so fascinating. For those unfamiliar with the franchise itself, it essentially is this mansion that houses these shadow family members. And they're all basically shadows. It's just a silhouette of themselves. And so what they do is they actually assign each of the family members a living doll, which is this doll that stands at their side that it basically shows their expression. Since they are a silhouette, the living doll expresses for them. So if they are happy, this living doll next to them has to be happy to show them that. And following Kate's story, who is the character that we follow from the very beginning, watching how she learns about how to deal with her living doll, what is expected of her as a Shadow House family member. And yes, technically, as we get later on, getting into the second season, all the stuff that she's discovered about how things work within this mansion. To the point now when the second season, Kate is trying to create a revolt against the Shadow House. And so she's trying to find allies. She's trying to learn more about what's going on behind the scenes. And yes, the effects of everything that's kind of in play in this house. I don't want to spoil too much. I just want everybody to go into it as completely blind as possible, but it's super fascinating. How everybody's being manipulated, and again, how this grandfather of this mansion has put all this stuff into play is truly fascinating. The mechanics within this mansion is just, I can't get enough of it. It's a series that I feel like doesn't get enough attention. Like, not enough people are watching the show, and with the theme, the gothic feel of it, and the, the style and everything, it's just it's gold. It's absolute gold that everybody should check out. But yes, Shadow House, second season. Please go watch it. Moving on to my number three. It had to be in here. Yes. Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Yes, this series is absolute cyberpunk perfection. And I loved every single minute of it. I just... It's easily my favorite Trigger show of all time. And I, I'm always back and forth on Trigger. And this one was, I couldn't see any other studio doing Cyberpunk Edge Runners. They pulled off the aesthetic of Cyberpunk. I love Cyberpunk ever since I was a child. And they pulled it off here. The feel, the environments, all the gadgets and gizmos, and yes, all the pleasures and things that people of this world get swept up by. The obsession with cybernetics and the effects of cybernetics on people. It's all here and it's all done so well. But yes, I love the band of characters. Essentially, you have this guy, David, who's basically going to school and at some point some tragedies befall him. So he gets kind of swept up into the world of cyberpunk, joins this band of people that just go out and do different jobs. And I loved every member of that team. And I think that's where a lot of my enjoyment came from this series. They pulled off having this little band of guys that are just going out and doing mayhem and these different jobs. And each one of them had so much character. Yes, we didn't get deep backstories for each character. It was just the now. Like watching them in the now enjoy their time together and just do things was so fun. And yes, it all culminates to later on where everything just gets super crazy and trigger be trigger. <laughs> But I loved it. I loved every single minute of this series. And again, they just nailed Cyberpunk. Please go watch it. It is absolute gold. And yes, Rebecca is best girl. Always be best girl. Moving on. This was a struggle for me, honestly. Between two and one was a massive struggle for me. I literally thought about it for a long time. Essentially, my number two and my number one are interchangeable. They're both fantastic. I love them to death. They are literally anime of the year contenders for me and pos and yes, easily in my anime of all time list. But the problem is that each one of them does something amazing that the other doesn't. And the, this one does something amazing, this one doesn't. So in the end, I did some soul searching once again and I finally decided my number two is Summertime Render. And I wanna put it my number one, but I'm gonna put it my number two. I've decided <laughs> it's staying there. But yeah, Summertime Render is has been an absolute fantastic series for the last 25 weeks. A 25 episode series that fully adapted the manga, and I loved every single minute of it, despite one issue I had at the very end. But besides that, every week was just so fun. For those that don't know, it's basically this guy goes home after finding out that this girl that he knew when he was a child has unfortunately passed away. And as he gets to the funeral, he discovers that there's some, some stuff had missed in the background, like her death wasn't an accident. Additionally, he's learning about this legend of this island where people see a shadow of themselves, a doppelganger. And if they do, that doppelganger will kill them and replace them. And this spirals out of control. And what you kind of get is Shinpei trying to uncover the mysteries of this island itself. And yes, find out what happened to Ushio, his friend. 
A lot of people will say that this is essentially ReZero. I would more argue that this is more like Higurashi when they cry. Yes, you have a reset mechanic within this world, but additionally, it's more about this secluded village. It's more about the mysteries behind this village and this curse, this illness. And again, I think that's more similar to Higurashi when they cry. But yes, I can do agree that this does have some themes of ReZero, and I know that a lot of people know what ReZero is. So it's a fine comparison. Just don't think that you have Subaru here. Shinpei is actually a cool guy. <laughs> Shinpei is a really cool main character. He's very calm, collective. He does get frustrated here and there, but he's kind of a main character. You want to see him succeed. He's just kind of a good person that just wants to resolve this issue. And what I love so much about this series is that it's just, it's just full of mystery. It's a psychological mystery that we don't really get enough of in anime. And it's all done so well creating tons of little questions and over time answering those questions, not overwhelming you with questions, not letting the questions sit for too long. And the thing that I love most about it is that everything you kind of note, like why did this person say this? Why are they pointing out this specific thing? If you take note of certain things over time, it feels like it's, it's rewarding you for acknowledging certain things and noticing things. It was just a very rewarding show to watch. I love the mystery. I love the characters. Love the antagonist besides one. It's just, it's got, it's a great show. And I loved every single minute of it. It was an absolutely fantastic, thrilling ride that I'm kind of sad that it's over with. But yes, Summertime Render, my number two. Please go watch it. Unfortunately, stuck on Disney hell at the moment, but if you can find it, watch it. And moving on to my number one, which will probably not be a surprise to anybody if you knew that I just chose Summertime Rendering as my number two. <laughs> but yes, Licorice Licoil. This series is God, I love it, and I miss it so much. It's an original series done by A1 Pictures that essentially follows Licorice, which in this particular setting in Japan, they have these people known as Licorice, which are girls that are actually assigned to go out and take out threats before they become a threat. So if a person's opening up a bag and he's got a bomb in there and he's going to do something, you suddenly this school girl walks by and goes, beep, beep, takes him out. It's kind of like that whole thing. It essentially follows a girl named Takana who just goes crazy and mows down a bunch of bad guys despite her orders. So she kind of gets fired and kicked out of the DA, which is the organization that runs the Licorice. And she gets assigned to this cafe, Liko Rico. And Liko Rico is head by Mika, who is a former DA member. And at his side is Chisato, another girl who's a Licorice. And what you have is essentially is Takana trying to prove herself so she can get back in the DA, but at the same time, Chisato here is trying to kind of show her that that's not everything in life. Like she can still enjoy life despite not being a part of the DA, trying to bring her under her wing and show her fun things in life. And over time, you have this bad guy that shows up that's trying to recreate balance and just crazy stuff happens with cover-ups and all this kind of stuff. It's just a crazy ride. But at its core, what makes Licorice so great? The thing that I love so much about it is characters. This writer, the writer behind Bento, Asaura, is so good at character writing. Chisato and Takana are the stars. They are a chemistry that I don't find anywhere else in anime. They feel so natural, and the developments of those characters are so phenomenal. Takana especially, a girl who feels like her job as a Licorice is all that matters. Just take down targets, do your job, do what the DA wants, everything else doesn't matter. And what you're getting is over time, Chisato is basically chipping at the armor that Takana has placed upon herself, showing her that there's better things in life, showing her the good things in life and that she can enjoy things. There's one specific scene that just sold me on the series and that was this fountain scene. Takana visits the DA for a brief moment and she goes out to this fountain area and around her is all the dorms that the Licorice will eventually get into once they're actually a part of the DA. And you get the sense that Takana has essentially lost her home. She got kicked out of the DA. These are orphan children that are raised by the DA to be killers, and this is her home, and she got kicked out of it. And Chisato comes up and basically tells her, look, give Liko Rico a shot. Come back with us. Try to meet the folks there. Give it a shot. See if you like it. And if you still don't enjoy it, if you still don't find that fun, if you still don't find a place there, we'll figure out a way to get you back in the DA. It was Chisato basically saying, you can do whatever you want, but I'm offering you this home. I'm offering you a place to be. And again, how they portrayed that, the voice acting itself was absolutely phenomenal. Again, these characters feel natural. They're so well written and their voice acting was so fantastic. It almost feels like they gave Chisato like a freedom to just play her character how she wants to, and you can feel it. She feels natural, she doesn't feel rote. I mean, as much as I love anime, most characters just feel very kind of set in a formation and they have to say these lines. But there's outliers here and there, but I think Chisato overall just portrayed a very natural sounding person. But you had a phenomenal action. Some of the action scenes were so well put together. I just love how creative the action scenes were. They weren't just simple shoot back and forth. There was a lot of creativity to flanking and dodging bullets, which Chisato can do, by the way. Uh, it's just a lot of fun. I absolutely loved it. And again, 
at the core is Chisato and Takina. They they just they won the entire year for me. <laughs> they won my heart, and the writing was just so phenomenal. Please go watch Sudokurusi Coil. But that's it. That's my top five anime of summer 2022 anime season plus one. <laughs> My honorable mentions, there's a lot of them. And like I said, I was planning on doing a top 10. I had to force myself not to. But yes, Overlord season four was fantastic. Overlord continues to be such a phenomenal series. I think the only reason it fell off the list is because there was a section of it that kind of was a shrug for me. The later parts of it was so good. I still love the characters. Ainz is still a fantastic character. And I want more of that series. And I'm just dreading the fact that we're going to have another huge delay. Awashi, it's a sports show I actually love. I absolutely love Awashi. It was so phenomenal. I just love the characters. Hana was fantastic. Uh, the drama in there, the very early moments of that series with him and his family and pushing him off to being able to do this, what he wants with soccer was just absolutely fantastic. The roadblocks he runs into, the issues he faces and the idea that he's just not a good soccer player. It was just it was just so good. I loved it. And the ending was was an icing on the cake. Parallel World Pharmacy, I absolutely love the series. It was, yes, not Mushoku Tensei, but had the feel of it. it. It did a really good job of really grounding this idea of somebody going to another world, being a pharmacist, and trying to help people. Helping the commoners, people that need it the most. Um, just the main character has a lot of heart. And I loved how he explained each of the things that he did for people. Each of the medicines and the, and the, the cures that he had for certain people. It was just really grounded. The guy knows his medicine, and it definitely shows in how they wrote that series. I will admit the ending was a little bit of a, was a letdown, but it was still a good series. Damachi Season 4, easily the best season of the series so far. It really does feel like the writing and everything is really picking up. Apparently the creator is now involved with it, and it really does show visually the drama, it's, it's getting really harsh. <laughs> like we're running into some really difficult stuff right now and it's got me and I cannot wait for the second part of it. Yeah, because it's a guy to babysitting, super cute series, just loved every minute of it. Yaika is absolutely adorable, one to protect that smile and that's the whole idea behind the series, the Yakuza guy protecting Yaika's smile. <laughs> and then finally, Engage Kiss. Now this series, I had my issues the first half of it, felt like it was way too much tell and note show and then they end up doing the showing at the later parts of it, but I still love the characters. They were a lot of fun and the core concept of it with this idea of giving up your memories and the effects that it has on people around you was really interesting. I actually really liked it. So definitely recommend that one as well. That's it. That's all. That's all. <laughs> that's all I'm going to go over. Uh, I didn't include Utuaramano because that's still continuing on, but that's it. That's my favorite shows of the summer 2022 anime season. The wrap up of the season. Cannot wait for the fall season. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get all my content. I do news, reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more and you like what you see here, I would greatly appreciate if consider supporting us on Patreon, our tips link, or super thanks button down below, or to share out this video. I greatly appreciate everybody that does, and y'all take care.